James Boyle, The Public Domain, in closing the Commons of the Mind. Step into the world of The Public Domain, Enclosing the Commons of the Mind by James Boyle, where the complexities of intellectual property law unveil the threat to creativity, innovation, and the public domain. In this book summary, explore the historical and contemporary aspects of patents, copyrights, and trademarks as they increasingly transform into rigid barriers to the free flow of ideas. Delve into the crucial balance between the necessary protection of creations and the openness required for progress all while understanding how the excessive expansion of intellectual property laws impacts technology, cultural, and artistic developments. Intellectual Property, A Recipe for Disaster The book discusses how the current state of intellectual property law, which covers patents, copyrights, and trademarks, has become too broad and excessively protective. The author argues that this trend is destroying the public domain, which refers to ideas and developments that should be collectively owned. The U.S. Digital Millennium Copyright Act DMCA, is a prime example of this, as it overturns the fair use principle that previously limited copyright. The book highlights how intellectual property law affects technological and creative development. The overly protective mindset behind these laws has created rigid and exclusive barriers around basic knowledge and ideas, which should be freely available to the public. The author gives examples of how U.S. patents now exist to protect things like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and human genes. The author also challenges the current legal trend of protecting intellectual property at all costs. The book provides evidence that this trend is a recipe for creative disaster as it limits the ability of artists and inventors to build on existing themes and ideas. The book urges society to conceive of intellectual property in a way that supports technological and creative growth instead of stifling it. Ownership and Legal Protection Real property and intellectual property are vastly different, the former is a rivalrous good that cannot be shared while the latter is non-rivalrous and can benefit from being used by others. However, both types of property deserve legal protection. Intellectual property rights are essential for promoting creativity and shaping our information marketplace. Trademark laws also protect brands from unscrupulous companies that might use established firms' brands to fool the public. Intellectual property law has become increasingly robust and all-inclusive, but it has led to unintended consequences such as limiting the pace of innovation and decreasing business transparency. Patents and copyrights, in their current form, are forms of perpetual corporate welfare and inhibit inventors and artists. As a result, progress is suffering. Hence, we must reform intellectual property law to ensure that legal protection promotes progress. Jefferson's Warning on Intellectual Property In a letter to Isaac McPherson, Thomas Jefferson warned against the exclusive rights of inventors and the potential harms of strict enforcement of intellectual property laws. He believed that ideas should spread freely and that copyrights were becoming obstacles to creativity and access to information. Although he acknowledged the need for intellectual property laws, he considered them as limited legal rights that should be carefully controlled and assigned. Jefferson argued that intellectual property differed from tangible properties and carried no entitlement or permanence, posed monopolistic dangers, and should always be delineated properly. The Privatization of Ideas Society is facing a new enclosure movement where lawmakers and regulators are using intellectual property laws to close off every new idea, creation, and development. This is not a new phenomenon. There was an earlier enclosure movement from the 16th to the 19th century when kings, nobles, and landowners confiscated common land and made it their own. The winners were the rich landowners who became wealthier. Similarly, today, the winners of the second enclosure movement are private companies who attempt to patent gene sequences. Many scientists believe that the human genome belongs to all of humanity, but private companies argue otherwise. The protection of intellectual property used to apply only to certain cases, but now it is the norm. Patents are being stretched to cover ideas that scholars would have agreed were unpatentable 20 years ago. 
The current enclosure movement is essentially a revolution of the rich against the poor of the intangible commons of the mind. The DMCA and the imbalance of copyright law. In the era of the internet, content providers have voiced their concerns about the ease of copying creative material online. The DMCA was ratified in 1998 to prevent getting around encryption and electronic safeguards of such material. However, this law has overturned the fair use standard, which had previously balanced copyright protection with necessary limitations. The imbalance of the DMCA endangers freedom of speech and expression. Despite this, content providers ignore the vast new markets and distribution opportunities that the Internet has opened up. They believe that the Internet should be strictly monitored, restricted, and penalized, rather than being free, open, and accessible. Copying in a network society, however, is not only easy, but necessary for transmission, storage, caching, and reading. The DMCA may make lending music or copying small sections of digital creations illegal in the future. The Challenging Equilibrium of Copyright Law Copyright law intends to encourage creativity by providing financial benefits but finding the right balance between rights and restrictions can be difficult. Music is a tough area for copyright law to regulate because it is additive. The content, publishing, and distribution industries have always dictated copyright legislation. Ray Charles's hit song, I Got a Woman, sampled a 1904 gospel song by Will Lamartine Thompson. Fortunately, Thompson's copyright had expired in 1955. Current copyright laws unduly constrain musicians and artists from building on earlier works and musical traditions, impeding the development of popular genres like jazz, soul, rock, and rap. The book excerpt explains that copyright law is meant to promote creativity and provide financial benefits to artists. However, finding the right balance between rights and limitations is challenging. Music is an especially difficult area for copyright law to regulate because it is additive, artists generally build on the works of those who came before. Influential music genres such as jazz, soul, rock, and rap may never have developed under current copyright laws. The author also sheds light on how the content, publishing, and distribution industries dictate legislation. This imbalance has unduly constrained artists to an extent where building on earlier works and musical traditions is challenging. The author shares an example of Ray Charles's hit song, I Got a Woman, which borrowed from a 1904 gospel song by Will Lamartine Thompson. Fortunately for Charles, Thompson's copyright had expired by the time he released the song. However, if Charles had written the song under the current era of robust intellectual property protection, he would have been in violation of copyright laws. The Truth About Intellectual Property The argument for robust intellectual property protection is often supported by the claim that it offers incentives for new content development. However, does this really stack up? The US and Europe provide a clear comparison, US databases thrive, despite the lack of intellectual property protection, while Europe only received a short-term boost from the database directive. Ultimately, the limitations on intellectual property are just as important as the rights themselves, with the empty spaces as important as the content they surround. The Need to Discuss Intellectual Property Rights Intellectual property rights advocates have been successful in expanding these rights for half a century, despite a lack of public engagement and widespread understanding of the subject. This trend is likely to continue but the implications of intellectual property for culture and technological progress are too significant to ignore. Just as environmentalists successfully convinced the public of the importance of a healthy environment, activists must engage the public in a debate on the new politics of intellectual property as the public domain is eroding. Businesses and their advocates are attempting to wall off the public domain, which is an invaluable human resource that everyone has far too much to lose by ignoring. Democratic decisions are made poorly when made for the benefit of a few stakeholders, and everyone should carefully consider the implications of intellectual property rights. As the curtain closes on the public domain, enclosing the commons of the mind, 
It becomes evident that the ever-growing intellectual property laws pose grave consequences for the very innovation and creativity they aim to protect. Overprotection is obstructing the exchange of ideas and slowing progress in various fields. Boyle calls for public engagement to challenge the detrimental consequences of such laws, and emphasizes the importance of finding the right balance between protection and openness in the intellectual property landscape. Ultimately, safeguarding the public domain is crucial to ensure a thriving environment for collective knowledge, creativity, and innovation.